What do you say we talk uh, some uh, Miami Red Hawks football, shall we? Cradle of coaches to be sure. We take a look at uh, the numbers from last year after a, a very strong beginning, a, a culmination of uh, some things uh, had Don Treadwell's football team uh, not finishing the way they wanted, although offensively, certainly there were many, many moments that, uh, that were explosive. They did they get a huge win over their arch rival, the Ohio Bobcats, and we uh, say hello to now the third-year head coach of the Miami Red Hawks. Played at the Cradle of Coaches, so he's a, a proud Miami alum as well, Don Treadwell. Don, great to see you. And as we start this brand new football season, now as you, you and your staff go into your third year, do you sense with the, with the players that now there's not only a familiarity feeling, but a comfortability feeling, and that the foundation is in place for things to develop in a strong manner for you? I think you touched on it. Really, the question and the answer, you did very well. <laughs> uh, you, I didn't mean to do the answer. You are right on target there with that. I mean, very much so. I think any time you've been able to be in a program, as we've been with two years, we feel very strong about the foundation that we've laid. And therefore, because of that continuity, typically you can just sense it in your players. There's more of a common language now on how we do things. Uh, certainly, I've been blessed to have four other assistants on the staff that are Miami football alumni as well. So, you know, to have that tradition be a part of who you are, but now have it a little bit more instilled in the young men that we actually coach, boy, it's really just kind of neat to see that develop at this point. Don, I, 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 we did your game last year against UMass on your campus. Uh, for me as a football coach to see the, the plaza with all of those busts of the great Miami folks there, uh, Wow, I mean, that was really enlightening for me. For you, uh, being an alum, that's got to be amazing. Well, it really is. You know, we talk about that, and we're very aware of our legacy there. And typically, we talk it in terms of, you know, it's a privilege and a responsibility from a coaching perspective. And so there's no lack of motivation. Trust me, every day we wake up and walk down that hallway uh, headed to the office there for all those that have been there before. Don, we mentioned that, uh, again, you got off to the good start, the kind of start to, that you liked. And ha Have you been able to, or you and the coaches, did you quickly identify maybe where things got away from you? Was it a culmination of why the season did not finish the way uh, that it began? And do you feel that it's correctable, that you can rectify it and stay more consistent as this year embarks? Yeah, no question. I think coming out of the season, uh, about three points of emphasis that we had in, in terms of a quick reflection that has really been the mainstay even through spring football. And that is, you know, offensively, we felt without question we want to work towards becoming more of a balanced offense. Obviously, we had a great quarterback mm -hmm. in Dysert, so we pretty much led with the pass. But at the end of the day, balance, in our opinion, is going to serve us well. Defensively, from a, you know, statistical standpoint stopping the run is huge I think most defensive coordinators will tell you that and we weren't we didn't fare in the upper echelon of the conference this past year we need to do that to be a better Miami football team and then really the part that also plays in is special teams we believe we can be provide more explosive plays on special teams those three things will serve us well as we move forward this year Don uh, Austin Brown you talked about trying to stop the run your fine defensive lineman Austin Brown really missed practically the whole season with the back injury last mm -hmm. year. Uh, what's his status? Is he healthy? How does he look? Yeah, well, he's been just tremendously, he's recovered 100% to make a long story short. Had a good winter, you know, with the strength and conditioning coach and all those guys continue to improve their strength and conditioning. And he had a tremendous spring. So, they, you know, we've just been fortunate that, as you know, timing makes a difference. And because he got hurt after about the first or second game of the season, gave us an opportunity uh, to request you know, for him to have another year back. And you talk about a mainstay. When you lose one of your marquee players, it makes a difference no matter what position. But certainly when you're you know, speaking about stopping the run and your best guy is not even on the field. So we're anxious to have him back in the lineup. On that side of the football, your eyes automatically go to uh, Deion Nunley. I, I just love the way that he aggressively plays the corner for you. Two-time first-team All-Mac performer. I think of him as a ball hawk, Don. And, and with that kind of young man and, and the precedent and the example he can set, are those some of the things that you're asking from an upperclassman like that? Maybe does it go over and above for a day on Nunley what you do on the football field that uh, we need it to be way over the top in every capacity? You know, he really actually, when we got there, you know, we had heard some good things about Dayon, but then you just see him 
each year improve his game. And it says a lot about the young man as far as just self-motivation. He is one of the hardest workers on our team. So he doesn't necessarily have to say a whole lot because he does it every day in practice. He works to win every drill that we do. He's just so competitive. But then, like you said, on game day, he has just that knack and he has those instincts that the top DBs have, and he's got that. So he makes a big difference on what we do. Offensively, the loss of Zach Dysert, one of the great quarterbacks uh, in the country last year. Forget about the Mac, in my opinion. Yep. Austin Boucher is kind of penciled in. I mean, uh, is, is that where, how does that sit the quarterback position? You know, we're excited. Very few teams, I think, when you look at a quarterback that loses someone like a Zach Dysert, who's been a you know, two, three year starter, and then all of a sudden you have the next guy on deck, who is certainly Austin Boucher. Well, as you guys know, Three years ago, mm -hmm. Austin Boucher had to step in and help this program win five games and win the you know yep. the bowl championship game. So we're very fortunate to have a guy back that has been in that role. He's been a leader. He's been a winner. And so to have someone immediately take the reins now that has that going for him is, is a bonus because that's not the norm. There's a quarterback in name uh, around uh, the Midwest in the state of Ohio, uh, Tupa, Tom Tupa, NFL quarterback. His son is going to play for you. Coming in as a true freshman. Uh, could he get in the mix, possibly, here as uh, the summer turns into the fall and you begin training camp? You know, we'll see. One thing we've done a good job of every year since we've hit the ground running with our program is always provide every young man an opportunity to see if he's capable of earning a spot in the 2D. And our upperclassmen know that, and I think that's why they work so hard through the winter and the offseason and spring football to really make a mark because they know that each freshman class is going to be given an opportunity to see if they can compete. And, Tupa will be just like the rest of them. There you go. Let's take a look at uh, what Don Treadwell and his Miami Red Hawks have ahead of them, schedule-wise. And uh, so, you know, you, you got the trips of Marshall and Kentucky, and then you get Cincinnati at home, and then a trip to Illinois, and then you start to get into Mac play. Uh, you don't make the schedule, but do you like the way it lays out balance-wise for you, Don, in terms of making strides early? You know, you touched on it. These schedules, for the most part, are done four to five years in right. advance. So you kind of take it as it is in stride. And at the end of the day, you know, we focus more on the process. Uh, the schedule is what it is. You know, obviously we're in a tremendously competitive conference. And of course, most of us in the MAC also have a tremendously competitive non-conference schedule too. So we just concentrate on the process of preparing each week so that by game day, we're playing at our best. We love talking Miami Red Hawk football with you. We're going to see you a few times here on the ESPN Family and Networks, Don. So uh, look forward to it. Have a terrific 2013, and uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you very soon. Appreciate it, guys. Good being with you today. Don Treadwell, the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks. All right, so that wraps up the MAC East. Well, you see how, a, see how a MAC football preview show sets up? All the media chatting with the head coaches and their respective players. The MAC West shines brightly when we get back on ESPN3.